Namaskaram Sadhguru. You said that if we have imbibed the very essence of inner engineering program, our very presence can be transformational. Can you please explain further on this? Oh. Uh, I think a few days ago in the same one of these darshans I spoke about it, maybe didn't dwell on it. I said, Shambhavi Mahamudra is not a practice. It is like we have a Dhyanalinga temple. Somebody goes and sweeps the temple because there's no other ritual to main it, maintain the Dhyanalinga. Somebody sweeps, somebody cleans, somebody maintains the atmosphere. That's all. Are they doing something for the Dhyanalinga? No. They're just doing something for the floor, the atmosphere, stuff like that. So once you have Shambhavi Mahamudra, this is how it is. It is a certain consecration. I've always been saying this, the easiest consecration that you can do is a living human being. It's not for nothing that human being is the peak of evolution on this planet, it's the best material you can find. But the only problem with the human being is, the day when they come for the initiation day, they're blown away and they're, you know, tears of ecstasy flowing. Uh, within a few hours or a few days, depending on who they are, they'll make a U-turn. Not everybody, but a whole lot of them. Usually, the most derogatory term that they use against me is, oh, we have to, this was wonderful, but we have to get back to normal life. This is horribly insulting. <laughs> They're saying to be peaceful, to be joyful, to be blissful is abnormal. To be miserable, to be worried, to be anxious, to be a lump of nothing is normal very derogatory towards me. So because of these silly ideas of their normality, they will make you turns. They've invested in misery. See, it took me a long time to realize this. When it first happened to me, that I sat like this and I burst into ecstasy, I thought, this is it, I will make the whole world ecstatic. 38, 30, almost 39 years ago now. I made a plan in two and a half years' time, I will make the whole world ecstatic. Because who will not want it? There is no fool like a young fool. I was twenty-five and I had hit a gold mine and I knew I can do this because you don't have to do nothing. If you simply sit here without messing with your mind, you will become ecstatic. So I thought, who will not want it? Such a simple thing and so fantastic. Who will not want it? Well, thirty-nine years <laughs> Slowly realizing that people have such investments in their misery, even if you show them an ecstatic way to live, huh? If they get up and walk, they want to take this cushion or even the chair with them and walk. Yes. <laughs> when I initially thought the inner engineering programs, they're just wild. I'm not dressed like this, I'm in a faded denim and a t-shirt, talking wild. My language was not cultured, I could say anything. Uh, walking up and down and, you know, announce a four-day class and sometimes it goes into six days, sometimes it goes into twelve days, any which way. But they didn't understand a word that I was talking about. Even now, they don't. But their lives are transformed. 
because that's the only way it works. Nobody is getting transformed because of the words. Words are because they're so stupid, if you just make them sit here, they will go crazy. You have to tell them something. See, even a, this is a darshan, that means I must just sit, you must just look. <laughs> but if I just sit here, you will go crazy. <laughs> what is he doing? He's just sitting, what are we looking? <laughs> so, I have to talk. Otherwise, no need for talking. See, if I go into the villages, if I just walk in, everybody bursts into tears. Because they don't have much value for all these too many words. So, we have consecrated you with Shambhavi. If you live it, you don't have to advertise, do in engineering, do in engineering every day to your wife, to your husband, to your children. Please, da, yanakaga pannada, yoga pannada. Ah, Bama, you know, you boy on the end, I Because they are not seeing anything. You are saying wonderful things, but they have to see wonderful things, isn't it? When they see you, they must feel, wow, I want to be like this. If that happens, transformation happens. So, because it's a consecration, in a way, what we are trying to do is create walking temples, you know. If you build a stone temple, it's only in one place, you can't take it anywhere. Well, the Analinga, if you're willing, because it's a non-physical form, it's available everywhere, but that needs a certain level of receptivity. So that's why we thought we will create millions of walking temples. So when you walk, those of you who are initiated, when you walk anywhere, when you are in your home right now, you must understand you are a temple in your house, you are a temple on the street. You must walk knowing this. People will come to you in a certain way. You don't have to preach anything, you don't have to advertise, you don't have to put... Uh, have it uh, inner engineering tattooed on your forehead. None of those things are needed. You simply be truly truly, truly that you are living constantly responding in a limitless way without any sense of boundary. In a level of your emotion, you are like a mother to the world. Don't do anything, simply sit there, people will get transformed. Not just people, plants will respond, animals will respond, everything around you, even inanimate things will reverberate differently, one hundred percent, I'm telling you. Well, there are a lot of textbook scientists who will immediately say, oh, he's spreading pseudoscience. Well, their idea of science is rudimentary. Real scientists will never say such things, because they know what they have explored is a tiny speck, what is unexplored is limitless. So, it doesn't matter who says what, if you just live with these two things, you didn't understand anything else, you just have to keep the atmosphere clean. See, right now there is Dhyanalinga temple, however powerful it may be, if you put filth in front of that temple, even if it's very powerful, people will not go there. You keep it in a certain way, people will go. So your practice is just that, cleaning up the place and keeping... removing the cobwebs every day, that's it. You are not doing anything to energize, it's not like Shakti Chalana Kriya, you're trying to build something which is a long t affair. That's why we shifted to Shambhavi, because I didn't see people have neither the perseverance, nor determination, nor commitment to really work to build themselves up to another level, because that's a lot of work. Kriya Yoga is a lot of work. This is why we came to Shambhavi Mahamudra, mudra means it's already there. You just experience it, you live it, that's all. You don't have to do it, but just daily removing of cobwebs, cleaning up the floor, this is all your work, rest will happen.